here today with a person that I met uh, this year. I came to his church, uh, Pastor Albert Apia. I got it right. You got it right. Uh, what's the name of the church again? Renewal Christian Center. Renewal Christian Center in Bowie, Maryland. I met you I, um, through um, Alicia, Adams, Alicia Adams, and she invited me, and you invited me to come to your church to do a workshop for yes. your um, music ministry. Yes. And, uh, and that was a wonderful experience. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming. And thank you for being on the show today. Uh, you know, there's so many pastors in the area. It's, it's, a, it's refreshing to learn of somebody new that's doing the great things that you're doing. Thank you. So let's talk about you and your ministry. Let's talk about the early beginnings of you, how you got into the ministry. Um, you know, I was originally studying for my MBA. Okay. Uh, and I got involved in a new church. In fact, when we got married, um, my wife was in that particular church, mm -hmm. so after marriage, I joined her in that church uh, in Highsville. Uh, okay. Um, What's the name of the church again? Uh, that was um, Church of the Living God. Church of the Living God, okay. In Highsville, Maryland, pastored by Dr. Stephen Jeremy, mm -hmm. a great man of God. So uh, we got very involved in the ministry there, uh, and we served him uh, in different ways. I ended up being an elder in the church, mm -hmm. and uh, in the course of studying and uh, all that uh, I felt a call into ministry. And so I left pursuing my business studies mm -hmm. and went into seminary full time mm -hmm. for three years mm -hmm. uh, to uh, prepare for ministry. You had the perfect mixture. You went to business school and seminary because regardless of what people think, there is a business side to church. Yeah, there is, right. definitely. You know, you have to know how to do things in order to keep it alive, yeah. at least keep that side of it alive. Right. So. Um, did you honestly know what you were getting yourself into when you decided to, to start a church? I, I don't think anybody really had to know <laughs> uh, But if it's a call, right. definitely the Lord will see you through it. Mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, very interesting uh, beginning. Um, I came from seminary and served the pastor for three years. Mm. But before I left seminary, uh, it was very clear that the Lord was calling us to plant a church. Mm. You know, so, I said to my senior pastor, uh, the church I was in before I left for seminar, I said to him, you know, I'll come and save you because he really wanted me to come and uh, work with him. Right. So I said to him, I'll come and save you, but I feel the Lord wants us in a uh, church planting. And so when the time comes, would you release me? Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, yeah. You know, so I served him for three years, and uh, at the end of three years, I felt uh, the Lord was leading to uh, go out and plant the church. Mm -hmm. And so he released us with uh, his blessings. Wonderful. And, uh, uh, that was the beginning of it all. Um, very interesting story. Uh, we didn't have, um, of course, any money, n nothing uh, at all. And so uh, we're just fasting and praying and believing God to help us. Well, that's was my next question. How do you start a church with no money? With no money and no members. With no money no members. That was, that was yeah. my question. How, how have you found the experience of church planning? Um, uh, first of all, I think that it's, it's definitely a call. Mm -hmm. If God calls you and you pursue it, he will meet the provision. Right. You know, so, uh, how did he do it though? Everybody has a different story. How did he do it for you? Okay, for me, uh, or for us, because yes, for us, yes, wife, yes. Okay. And so um, we, um, of course, fasted and prayed, waited mm -hmm. on the Lord. And uh, an interesting thing happened. Um, a pastor in Virginia, uh, by the name of uh, Pastor Bill Frasnelli, mm -hmm. uh, a great man of God, uh, pastor in a church called uh, Jubilee Christian Center. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he heard we were planting this church. Outside the conference, and uh, I think um, the, he he realized what was going on. He had a plant in the church. I had no idea who he was, and so uh, one day I had a call from him. Would you come to my office in Virginia? So mm -hmm. I went to meet him, and he mentioned that uh, he knew we were about to plant a church in Maryland, and uh, he felt he wanted to support us. Mm -hmm. So he believed it or not, uh, he spent sixty thousand dollars. What? Mm -hmm. He advanced. Well, I mean. Every month he was supposed to ask with five thousand dollars. Uh-huh. He did this for a year. Okay. Is that right? Said, yeah. He said, Listen, I don't want you to worry about um, a paycheck, I don't want to worry about anything, we're going to support you mm -hmm. because this is what the Lord wants us to do. And so it was a marvelous answer to prayer. And so he supported us for uh, a whole year, five thousand dollars a month. And then the following year he supported us for with another thirty thousand dollars. Mm. You know, so mm. uh, it was just a miracle, and in fact, the, the probably the most interesting part of it was our budget for that first year was seventy-eight thousand dollars. Another friend of mine from seminary, I casually mentioned to him that uh, you know we're going to be planting a church in the future. When the time comes, 
uh, I'm going to knock on your door. And, uh, <laughs> would, you, would you respond when the time comes? And so I happened to run into him at a conference, told him that we are going to be planting the church. And he said, we're going to support you with $18,000. Uh -huh. So the entire $78,000 for that year was supplied even before we stepped out into the ministry. Wow. wow. So that was definitely a confirmation that the Lord was with us. And how long has the church been in existence? Uh, it's been in existence for 16 years, so we'll be celebrating 17 years. So. Right, right. And just recently when I came to your, uh, yeah, I, I came to do the workshop, you uh, expressed to me that you all are getting ready to build. We're getting ready to build. Uh, the Lord has blessed us with 23 acres of land, uh, prime property, uh, right of 301, mm -hmm. 301 and Chiro. And so uh, we raising funds at this point and uh, Lord willing, we are believing to break down this shit. Wow. And so all the millennials <coughs> out there should be bringing this funds. Wow, wow. <laughs> when I was at your church, um, um, I noticed that you had a very fatherly spirit with, and people really received that, the people that you, because cause one of my questions is to every pastor is, um, how have, how do you relate to other people? How do you adjust to different behaviors, different personalities? Um, what's your leadership style? And you seem to have a very fatherly, they seem to be respectful of you. Um, have you had to adjust any since being a pastor in terms of how you deal with other people? You know, I think, uh, you know, when you're called to be a pastor, mm -hmm. uh, generally the Lord would give you that compassion mm -hmm. toward people and, you know, the desire, I mean, the um, ability to empathize and to listen. Mm -hmm. And it's something that um, you, know, you, you develop also with time. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and so I think with time, I've become very empathetic, you know, patient with people. And when you think of the fact that you are a flawed human being, mm -hmm. uh, you, will, you will be compassionate to others. <laughs> you know. you know. So I, I think that really informs uh, the way I relate to people. The mm -hmm. fact that I'm flawed and we are flawed. And so mm -hmm. you have to be patient, you have to listen. And, and people are struggles. Mm -hmm. And you are there to father, you are there to shepherd. And so. Uh, it should come with the territory, I should say. Right, uh, right. If you are truly called right. to be a pastor. Right. Your church is very heavy in the missions. Very heavy in missions. Talk to me about that. Um, let, let me, of course, uh, you just heard uh, how we started as a church. And the reason why Pastor Bill supported us because they believe in missions. They believe that they should go out and you know, spread the gospel. And so that spirit was planted in us right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, so we de de determined that every single year, we will support one missionary somewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And so now I think we have about 15 missionaries that we support around the world. So every single year we'll take on a missionary and uh, we support them on a monthly basis. We'll send money out to make it possible for them to do their work. Mm -hmm. And um, we also do uh, from time to time go out on mission trips uh, you know, as a church. Uh, I personally do. Uh, this year, for instance, I've been to um, to Morocco, I was in Morocco earlier in the year, you know, uh, because we have a missionary there. Okay. So we do those kinds of things. Uh, so we are very, very involved in missions. We try to support, uh, you know, as many missionary projects as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, West Africa, for instance, we do have um, an orphanage that we support also in West Africa. You know, uh, we are helping with a church. Uh, project in Russia, for instance, and so mm. there are many things that we like to do. Wow, you're global. Yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's what the Lord has called us to do. That's what the yeah. Lord has to do. Yes, yes. So yes. I think it's important to, uh, to uh, a missions man the church, I think we'll be blessed by God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, 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 and you most certainly have. Yeah. Talk about your family. You have an interesting family. Yes, you've met uh, my wife and children. Yeah, and yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Some, uh, we have twins. Uh, 16 years old, they'll be 16 on September 30th, I mean September 25th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and so, um, just a tremendous blessing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, my wife, I met my wife in London, and then, um, you know, uh, she was in the States, uh, you know, uh, we met again in the States and got married. You know, so. So you met her in London? I met her in London. And then you didn't see her again until you came back here? Yes. You took a risk, I saw her briefly back in, the, in I, Africa. I got you. And came. I got you. So, but um, interestingly, she's the one who actually invited me to church in London, mm. and I got saved you know, in that wow. church. Yeah. So I figured uh, 
I always tease you that um, the Lord let, let, let you uh, lead me to the Lord, and then I'm here a rose for you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's all right. All right. You, um, um, I ask every preacher this. Let's talk about your sermon preparation. How do you prepare for a sermon with all that's going on? Um, what's your preparation like? Okay, be before I answer that, can I go back to the kiss? Yeah, yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, um, great kiss. Uh huh. Really, really smart and intelligent. You know, and uh, Sam is involved. Both of them are very involved in church. Sam mm -hmm. is. You know, he, yeah, he's playing. He's doing well too. Doing well, and uh, you're mentoring him. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my daughter also is, uh, you know, in the choir, mm -hmm. uh, and so they are very involved in ministry. We are very grateful. Yeah. Uh, good wow. Okay. So yeah. now I'll go back to the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sermon prep. Talk to me yeah. about it. How do you prepare Sermon every Sunday? You know, normally I like to, uh, I like to do a series. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. at this point, for instance, I'm doing a series on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'll take a break. You know, in segments, and then you know, do a like topic class seven or something that I feel the Lord is leading me to to you know, to minister on. Um, I believe in preparing adequately for sermons. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, I would um, start my sermon preparation uh, on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. and so I'll study a little bit uh, on Tuesdays to all the sermon, get my outline ready. Um, because we have Bible studies on Wednesdays, mm -hmm. I'll do part sermon preparation, part Bible studies, and then devote Wednesdays to preparing for Bible studies. Mm -hmm. And then Thursdays, I'll go back to the sermon, mm -hmm. you know, to try to, you know, work a little bit more on it, clean right. up, and get it together, like tighten it up. But, yeah, tighten it up. Yeah. And then um, yeah, generally on Friday, I'll shut myself out as much as I can mm -hmm. and try to um, finish off. I uh, try to give as much as I can to the sermon right. preparation. Right. Yeah. Do you ever talk to your wife about your sermons before you preach them? Uh, not really. Not really? Uh, okay. She's just, <laughs> she just surprised. Uh, <laughs> not, not really, but every once in a while I'll bounce ideas off of her and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And uh, you know, So uh, Tuesdays I'll spend part of it on sermon preparation, Thursdays a little bit and try to finish up. Right. Try. So I do it in segments. Right. You know, so, I wouldn't sit down for several hours. So I just do a few, a little bit of it. Right, right, right. You right. Know, right. And then get One chunk at a time. Yes, yes. And then Sunday mornings, I always wake up very early. So mm -hmm. Sunday mornings, I, you know, spend probably about two hours, you know, praying and go to the ceremonies mm -hmm. uh, as early in the morning as possible. Right. Last question: uh, What are your hobbies? What do you do when you're not in church? I enjoy. I enjoy, um, you know, traveling when it's possible. Mm -hmm. Now, I always tell the kids that I can't wait for them to go to college so we can <laughs> have our life back. Uh, but uh, you know, traveling is something I enjoy doing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to different parts of the world when I have the, you know, mm -hmm. the opportunity to, to do that. And I like to read also mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, to write. So I'm writing a couple of books right now. Oh, wow. So hopefully when it's done, I'll come back on your show. Absolutely. Talk about those books. Yeah, Absolutely. So, those Writing is something that I enjoy doing. Yeah. Uh, every day, for instance, uh, we have a daily devotional that we put out. Uh, okay. You know, mm -hmm. Really helpful, and many people are beneficial from it. So, right. uh, you just compact that into a book, and you got that's, yes. that's book one. Yeah, that's yeah, book one. Right, right, that's right. Definitely book one. So yeah. thank you so much. This, uh, appreciate you. Appreciate thank appreciate you. having you on the show. Thank you. Look forward to having you back when the book is out. And much love to your wife and your children. Yeah. Uh, I don't know your daughter that well, but I'm just getting to know your son. Yes. He's a great man. Thank great you. man. Great man thank of God. You. Thank you so. Look forward to having you back soon. Thank you. For more information on how to become a guest on Real Talk with Philip Carter. Or for general inquiries, please email us at realtalkwithphilipcarter at yahoo.com. Tune in next Monday for another edition of Real Talk with Philip Carter.